fact that we know that there's you know less teachers that are coming out in the marketplace. So I think uh, Broward continues to be an attractive place um, for um, teaching professionals to come. And I uh, just, again, want to commend staff uh, for the great work they've been doing in terms of putting on the fairs, uh, working around the clock, and making sure that we're in a much better place um, than we've been, and that continues to improve year after year. And, um, you know, even given the size of where we are, uh, you know, our vacancy rate in absolute numbers, uh, that percentage-wise, um, is lower than um, some of our neighboring districts. I've, I've talked to Palm Beach uh, in the past, and the superintendent there I talked to uh, periodically. And so, again, I just want to commend staff for the great work you're doing. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Palmer. What, um, I guess my concern is, because everyone is an annual teacher, Usually your first year is your toughest year, and like 50% of teachers leave after their first year, but they can stick it past the first year. The second year, they usually do so much better. But because the way the system is set up, there's no protection for them to get a job. Mm -hmm. So what are we doing to help those teachers, having been a teacher myself, and having been an administrator, there's tremendous growth from the first year to the second year. Mm -hmm. So how are you keeping those teachers? That, I guess that's my concern. Because now you can just say, okay, you're out of here, you're, you know, but really you, you hire them and there's professional development and everyone has a tough first year. I mean, I don't know, a teacher, you cry your whole first nine weeks, like every day you go home and cry. The teacher tells you they're not doing that, you, there's something wrong. You cry every day. You're like, did I do that right? Did I do that right? Mm -hmm. And so how are we helping those teachers and, you know, because it's sad that if you're not highly effective, you're not guaranteed a job. You're, you're right. We work very closely um, with um, Heather Parente's department and also Angela Brown's department now. Mm -hmm. um, they are working on trying to expand the coaching program that we have currently um, because we do have an induction coach program, which we have found some great success with. Um, and in our surveys, we find that teachers are staying because they feel like they're getting supported. Um, so we're working closely with them. I know they're looking at expanding that program because we do need more coaches to support the new teachers. That model works well um, because that coach is dedicated to helping that teacher versus the NEST program where, you know, I'm a teacher, I have my full load, and I'm still trying to mentor the teacher, so it's a little more difficult to find right. the time. But we're finding some great success with that. Um, we do leverage um, the Department of Employee Vet Evaluation, have the Parentes Department, you know, immediately when a teacher contacts our office, we get them on the phone, we connect them with one of their peer reviewers, um, just to help them overcome that anxiety. Um, and I think that's what it is, it's just finding the schools that are supportive, the principals continuing to let the principals know. The principals are aware that there's not a huge pool of people knocking down our door to come into work, so we've got to work with these people. Um, otherwise, we're not going to have teachers. So if mm -hmm. they are, if they're going to be a teacher and they have a passion and they like kids, then, then we'll, we'll work with you and make you into a good teacher. Okay. But just because somebody went to school to become a teacher does not mean that they're going to be a great teacher. Absolutely. Just a quick thing, and that's a great point, uh, Ms. Barlin. What's the actual number? I thought it was like 40 to 50% after the first five years. It's not in the first year. Is that correct? Um, it is. After the third year, we find that 43% of the teachers that started will stay with us. So okay. as you said, but we do have a high exodus in the first year. Okay. We don't have the exact numbers, but it is right. high that that first year is the toughest the year. The first year, it's, it's a national. Not, yeah. It wasn't, yeah. the statistic isn't our statistic. No, but no, it's no the I'm national. trying to remember what the national is. And oh, so, um, I know, but it is. It's like 50%. They all leave. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. it's really sad. Yeah, and so Ms. Barman, you um, raised a great point there. And I have had this discussion with, uh, I know, Mr. Nichols um, and staff that we absolutely must uh, begin to put things in place to improve retention rates because, you know, over time, this is going to catch up with you in terms of what we see going on in the marketplace. So we absolutely have to do a much better job in retaining as many teachers as we can. It's costly to deal with turnover, um, and it's also in the best interest of our schools and our teachers to have uh, better stability um, in the teaching ranks. So, um, and that goes to, you know, leadership, it goes to professional development, a lot of factors uh, that affect that. Because I, I think one of the number one, uh, I believe number one reason that teachers uh, end up leaving um, is due to working conditions, which is a broad category. Uh, but we need to work on those factors and we will um, as we go forward. So thank you for raising that point. No, thank you so much. You know, I want to add a 